It's just another beach. A beach we pass by every single day in our commute to work and school and home and back. We're here, sensing, experiencing a landscape which has always offered both tranquility and obstacles for its dwellers. A beach which is created and taken away with the winds, waves, and will of nature. We choose to live near the sea and now must acknowledge that the landscape we love is not always constant. As you can see, the storm has just hit us now. It's pouring out here. The winds have started, and it's only going to get worse. Buffeted by strong storms, beset with problems of water and sand flow, and threatened by the rising tides of global warming, the beach has faced an unusual amount of erosion in recent years, so much that human intervention has been required to keep it in existence. Before there was ever a Goleta beach, there was a coast which was in constant flux between winter storms and calm summer days. Thousands of years of erosion, deposition, sea swells, shifting tides and earthquakes have shaped the coast we now call home. Goleta Beach is a park, a playground, a rehearsal dinner, a picnic lunch, a second date, and a moonlit stroll. It is a sandcastle, someone's getaway, another's lunch break, a birthday party, and a barbecue. This beach is a parking spot and a dog walk, a tourist trap, and a storm watch. Goleta Beach is a place to sunbathe, a place to nap, an exercise routine on a runner's map. Although the memories made here may last forever, while the sand from picnics and frisbee games is still freshly stuck in our sandals, the landscape itself may not be as everlasting. In the end, good views always seem to come with a sacrifice. In 1945, Goleta Beach officially came into being. Constructed with non-select fill, this sandier stretch of beach became a place for locals, tourists, and beachgoers to relax, picnic, and visit with family, friends, and neighbors. By 1960, rock revetments were put in on both the east and west ends of the park to shield the restaurant and underground utility lines from erosion and coastal shifts. Landscaping provided greener picnic areas, and parking lots were built for easy access to the beach. Since then, additional emergency rock revetments and berms have been put in place to protect Goleta Beach Park from erosion. But is there a point at which we can no longer contain nature's course? I've been uh, working on Goleta Beach on and off probably for about uh, 20 years. I was also on the uh, committee that had the charge to try to come up with a long-term management plan. Some said, uh, we're waving around saying, save the beach, save the beach. And some were saying, save the park, save the park. So uh, I realized that there was uh, some factions uh, within the committee as well as the people who were attending and these issues were uh, somewhat emotionally charged. Here at Goleta Beach, we're told that the park property used to be 200 feet wider than it is now. That is, relative to the tree that we can see down there, the beach, or the park, used to be 200 feet wider. Where did all that park go? 1998, there was a series of tropical storms that come with really high tides and southwesterly uh, wind swells that start attacking uh, the beaches along this part of the more particularly in my, my area of interest, Goleta Beach County Park, and we started seeing the loss of 
a sandy beach there. All that protects the park now from future El Nino waves is the line of rocks, which you can see here at the base of the cliff. The line of rocks that the Coastal Commission says must be removed, a line of rocks that I think ought to be rebuilt in a stronger, more engineered way to protect the park from the future big El Nino waves. Option one is a permeable pier which would consist of dense pilings placed alongside the Goleta Pier. These pilings would capture sand and rocks to feed Goleta Beach the sand it needs to stay present, yet also allow for sand to move through the pier to feed other beaches down shore. The permeable pile uh, solution is uh, the least environmentally uh, disruptive. Uh, it is the superior option environmentally to solve the problem. Along the shoreline end of the existing pier, these would be wooden pilings that would be closely spaced at the left end of the pier. The permeable pier would further widen the stretch of sand that makes up Goleta Beach and hopefully protect it from future storms and erosion. Unfortunately, the pier's impacts on coastal processes are not well understood. This approach may have less impacts than a rock seawall, but we feel it also has significant adverse impacts because it robs the down coast littoral drift, which is the movement of sand and water down the coast. It robs that littoral drift of the sand that is needed to replenish the beaches. So by causing the sand to build up at Goleta Beach, the beaches further down the coast would be deprived of sand they'd be robbed of sand, and we'd see more erosion down the coast. It's robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's why we don't support structures that cause the sand to build up at Goleta Beach, but would rob down coast beaches of sand. Option two is a managed retreat, which would allow the beach to essentially shape itself. The park utilities and parking lots would be relocated to the north end of the park, and the park grass would be moved back creating space for much of the naturally occurring erosion and deposition to take place. In this state, the beach would appear and disappear with the tides and shifting sands, allowing it to take its natural course. The managed retreat option is one that has been uh, really promoted by many of the environmental groups to try to um, work with the natural coastal processes rather than trying to fight it by keeping the beach by putting in rocks and so forth. So what you may have is a very steep um, wall of rock and it makes it very hard for people to get to the beach. Um, it makes increase the risk of washing away the sandy uh, beach itself. And I was more in favor of what they call managed retreat, which isn't an escape. It doesn't mean you're going to give up the beach. Uh, some people say that's just giving it up and someday the beach will be back at Hollister or something and maybe 5,000 years from now it might, but there'll still be a beach. But what it means is like after this storm here, we would bring in sand and rebuild the beach so people can use it in the summer. Uh, Professor Keller would say, no big deal, so it rows away the toilets. We move the toilets or just, we don't need toilets the beach, it rows away a parking lot, park somewhere else. It'll row away picnic tables, go sit on the ground. Uh, but he might uh, not talk to you about what do we do about the utility lines that go through there. There's a major gas line, major water lines, major sewer lines that go through there. They, each of them would cost at least a half a million dollars to move somewhere else. First of all, where do you move? And second of all, who's got a half a million dollars to do the moving? And so they're more involved in just uh, letting the beach be natural and do any old thing it wants rather than try to protect the assets we have there right now while trying to find a way to enhance the beach at the same time. We do not, and I personally do not support all of the aspects of the managed retreat because it still has a lot of rocks, still has a lot of disturbance, 